Hey guys, how's it going? It has been a weird, weird week. We have been dealing with 100 degree weather. It's set in the 70s and then it has just totally changed and we are at 103. So we're doing great here. Um, this, this is fall weather in California. It's bipolar, <laughs> uh, but that's not gonna stop me from doing some planting. So today I would like to remove the rest of the Bermuda grass that I was dealing with in that one area uh, where we just finally finished the fence. So I'm going to hand pull all of that and then we're gonna get three plants planted. So we're gonna get one variety planted. I have three of them. This is the meant to be Royal Raspberry Agastache. And they're just the cutest little guys right now. They're so tiny. Um, they had started to die back and I pruned them pretty hard back and then uh, they have they have rebounded since. So these guys will die back here pretty soon. I'm expecting them to. Um, they've had a very, very rough life since they came to my house, but it's okay. So I've got three of them to get planted. They're they're hardy in zones three through nine and they get just under three feet tall and wide. I first saw this plant over at Janie's house and it was stunning. I was in love with it. Um, it kind of just like stole my heart right from the beginning of it. Let me show you guys. So I don't know if you can tell, but see the back of these like fresh leaves right here? They are like a, a raspberry color. And I just thought it was so pretty and the blooms were gorgeous. They just were a stunning, stunning plant. Um, so I'm excited to get them planted. They are full sun lovers. They need a good amount of water and I'm pretty sure that they need to be sheared back halfway through the season to get a second flush of blooms. But um, I have zero experience with this plant so I'm really excited about it. So they get these beautiful flowers and they're kind of dark. The whole plant is kind of a dark vibe which I am just, I'm a sucker for right now. Um, and the bees love it. When I saw it at Janie's house, there were tons of bees all over this plant. It says that they are more drought tolerant or they're heat and drought tolerant, performs best in full sun with good drainage, um, add soil to the, to the, add soil, add gravel to the soil if needed. I'm not going to be doing any of that, uh, just because we get so hot here. Our, our heat is very, very intense and it's very, very dry. So I'm not looking to add any extra drainage. Um, but I think a little trio of these is going to be really, really cool. So let's head to the back and we're going to start pulling some Bermuda grass. I'm going to do it all by hand. I also wanted to show you guys, I got a brand new pop-up bag. I have just destroyed mine. You guys don't see it very often in camera. It's more often than not to the side of the camera just because I, I don't know, you guys don't need to see me throwing every single thing in the uh, pop-up bag, but I do use it almost daily. It gets used. Um, or if I do make a mess, I'll make big piles and then I can just come through with my big pop-up bag and I can just fill this thing up and then it makes it super easy to carry everything over to the yard waste bin. Mine did not have handles on it because I've had it for like four years. The handles had broke and the spring in the very top broke. So um, I figured it was time to order a new one. And when I ordered it, it was on sale. So I'm going to put the link to this one because you want to make sure you get the one with the hard bottom. I've seen some people who have ordered the ones that don't have a hard bottom and it just has this vinyl right here on the bottom. And once you start dragging that on the ground, it just shreds so it's not worth it buy the one with the hard bottom um like i said it was on sale and so now i have two of them i probably won't be using the other one much anymore though just because uh like i said the spring on the very top was poking out and i got stabbed a few times so let's go do some garden cleanup now so this is the area i want to clean out so i have a line that's kind of in here like this. I'm gonna come through and I'm gonna rework this because we're gonna change this. I get so stuck on lines. I was expecting to keep the flower garden to have a hard, hard corner right here and I decided not to do that anymore, that's stupid. So I'm gonna kind of soften that and so we'll turn all of this into grass. So I need to come in and I need to rework this line, how we're going to make it so that way you enter into this area. Um, but basically all of this, needs to come out. So I had just pulled up to these alliums. So I got to finish this and I got to come along and do all of this area. And I think I'm just going to plant those guys. Maybe they're three feet tall. They should probably go right back here a little bit. So actually they'll probably go right here. I think that that'll be a really good area. Three feet tall, three feet wide. I think that that'll be really, really pretty. And then I can do some more lower growing things towards the front like that. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, they probably should go right here. I know the bench isn't gonna stay there forever anyways. So they probably should just go like one, like one, two, three, like a trio right here. That way that's kind of what you see as you enter into this like flower garden. Um, and then I have all of this to do other things. I would like to do some more like taller things and then shorter things like this. And I think here just might be 
kind of weird. I don't know. I wasn't feeling that. So I'm thinking, like, I want them kind of close to the edge here. So one, two, three. I don't know. Let's get all this pulled. Or most of this pulled. Let's get as much of this pulled as we can. Well, I'm about one hour in, and I've made it from, where was I, here-ish, to all of this. So I just have this left to go, which really isn't a whole lot, and I kind of made my line, this is a very loose line, it's not straight. I'm trying to figure out how I can do like a very soft curve, because it's going to come like this. So then the entrance into this area is going to be at an angle instead of straight like this. Um, I think that that's going to be a better flow for the pathway that's going to come and go around like this. So, all I got left to is this section, and then we'll get those planted. I'm making them planted tomorrow because we are running out of daylight, and it is toasty. But I would like to at least get, like, this done and then maybe finish that tomorrow. At minimum, I want to get the back area done. <laughs> Brent has been helping me. He did like all of this section here. And then we just have just this little patch left to do. So I'm gonna turn the camera off and we're gonna get that and I'll show you guys in just a few seconds. But now you can actually see the flower bed. And then this will come like this. And then you can enter in this way. So I could ultimately like, you know, put a container here and you just kind of enter in from like sideways into this area, if that makes more sense. Then it's not just such a tight square. I feel like that's just gonna feel a lot more natural and like it's gonna be part of the walkway that's gonna be curving this way because this is all gonna be walkway around here. So I think that that is going to just kind of help that. My plan originally was to just have it be like, uh, this was going to connect to the edge of this bed and this was going to come out this way and then this was going to be a square but then I was going to have this walkway that was going to have a square or a chunk taken out of it so it just didn't work so I have to sometimes <laughs> remind myself things can change things are fluid I don't need to keep this corner here of this entry there's no reason so I think this is going to be great let me show you guys what it all looks like and then we will get to planting probably tomorrow because the sun is starting to set and uh, by the time we finish that um, I, I don't think there's going to be enough daylight left to get those things planted, at least not enough to be able to do on camera. So we're going to get this finished and I'll show you guys that and then I will see you in two seconds. All right, we are all done. So it took us exactly two hours. Well, it took me exactly two hours. Brent came for the last probably 15, 20 minutes. We started right here and we got all of this done. Oh man, this is going to be great. We might have went in a little too heavy right there, so uh, we'll kind of round that out once I get the metal edging in. I am going to go in with the edge right metal edging and do all of that, but we are going to not do the edge right until we get irrigation ran for all of the areas and for the lawn. So in this area, it's going to be a walkway that's about this wide. 
so a really wide walkway and this is going to be grass pathways and so we got to put in sprinklers every so often we got to figure out our spray pattern and all of that and so we have to run a ditch which run irrigation and we're going to do grass pathways so we got to get the irrigation ran here and then we want to fix the irrigation here and then once we get this irrigation done then we're going to go in and we're going to um, put metal edging in so metal edging won't happen for a while but i can at least keep the edges of these beds cleaned up so this was all bermuda grass in here and it has all been hand pulled that is what i dealt with all the way up to the fence and i have kept it out of this bed you can hand pull bermuda grass this one section took two hours and i was going very very hard um as long as you get the rhizomes from it let me show you guys so this is a bermuda grass plant and this is probably where one rhizome happened and then it split off and you can see each of these runners come out and then from each node a new plant comes out and this piece will lay down and this piece anywhere that this piece touches okay i'm doing a terrible job but anywhere that this piece touches then will lay down and it'll lay down roots you can see the roots that happen so as long as you get all of the rhizomes here and everything you'll be fine you can leave the roots the roots are not the problem, it's the rhizomes. So you can see how this one right here has split off to this section and then it's got another section and another section. So this is what you need to get is you need to get all of this. And yes, you can hand pull it, it takes some time. You need to make sure you get it all. I probably didn't get every single piece, but this is a really good starting point. So what this is gonna do is set me up for success. So now anytime I see anything pop up here that is Bermuda grass related, I'm going to come in and I'm going to pull it and I'm going to dig down and find those rhizomes. So anywhere that anything pops up, now I, I'm good to go. I won't do this for every section in my garden, um, but for sections like this where I already have most of it under control and I just need to, to do a little bit more, I'm gonna, do, I'm gonna hand pull it. It makes the most sense. And if you don't wanna do that, you can totally do the cardboard method if you're dealing with a blank slate. That's what Janie did. Do cardboard and then you do, it's a ton of compost on top. I can't remember how much it is. You'll have to go back and watch one of her videos. She did a ton of research on it. I will be doing more research as we get further into the projects that we're doing around here because I do want to get rid of most of the Bermuda grass and have actual grass. And so um, I do need to do some research about it. So this looks great. I'm very, very, very pleased with this. I'm going to be back tomorrow morning and we're going to get everything planted, um, which will be just a few seconds for you guys. Well, we're not gonna get everything planted. We're gonna get three plants planted and we're also going to fix the irrigation in here. So that way I can just come in and I can start planting this space up and I can plant it hard and it's gonna look so gorgeous. So I'll see you all in two seconds for planting. All right, it is the next morning and we're going to dig our holes back here. And I think they're gonna go on this side and backwards. So I think I'm gonna do all three kind of right here. I think it'll be pretty. I think it'll be a nice little border of them and uh, it should be good. So we're going to go ahead and aug some holes. I did pick up some more fertilizer, got it right up the street. So if you are local, you can find uh, the Espoma line right up the street from my house. Actually, you can find it at the Ace Hardware uh, in Los Molinos. So let's get these holes dug and get the plants in the ground now. <laughs>
it is. We got irrigation ran. We have bricks sitting on it just because when it's coiled, it tends to want to retain its shape of being coiled. So we lay bricks down. Usually we go with landscape staples, um, but the landscape staples were just bending because this ground is so hard. It's never been, it hasn't been watered pretty much all year. So uh, it's rock hard ground. Um, so we've got the bricks on here and that should help. Oh, there's a dove. Oh. So that should help until the sun cooks it and then it can keep this shape. And then once it starts to get watered, we will go in with a little bit of landscape staples. Those three right here, I decided to do the trio this way. And then I think I want to put in like a lemon cypress or something right there. So find some type of small ornamental tree or something like that to go in that area, something that stays very small. I think that that would be really pretty. And um, it would lend for winter interest in this area, which is something that is obviously gonna be needed because the grasses will die back. Pretty much everything in this area is gonna die back. The grasses, these guys, I mean, everything here is gonna die back until I can find some, I need to find some shrubs or something that can go in here that are evergreen that stay a little bit smaller because we do need to add winter interest into pretty much this entire area. But this is gonna be so good once it's all done. And it's really exciting seeing the irrigation in here and all of this Bermuda grass gone. Bermuda grass really is kind of one of those things that is a total pain when you have it. Um, and I'm sure somebody's gonna say that's not Bermuda grass. It's Bermuda grass, I promise. It spreads by rhizome. Um, and yes, you can hand pull it. You just have to stay on top of it. And I'm not gonna do it for the entire area, but I will do it for areas that I already have huge control over it, uh, the Bermuda grass. So once I get the metal edging in, that should pretty much stop it from entering into this area. Maybe a few rogue pieces here and there, but for the most part, it should be totally fine. So I hope that you guys enjoyed the video. It's gonna be so exciting because now I have a whole new area to be planting up and I think it's gonna be great. So thank you guys for visiting our garden and I will see you all in the next one. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.